Уважаемые друзья, уважаемые And well, given the fact that the pandemic just uh, paid extra focus to digitalization, and many experts say that the third, that the third decade of the 21st century, it, it will be, it will mark embark uh, the digital era society. Now, let me briefly introduce today's speakers or experts, uh, Mr. Tsui. Uh, an expert from Hong Kong, uh, Ms. Kozhamsharova, a principal of uh, Mukhtar Oez of South Kyrgyzstan University, huge expert in the sphere of in the sphere of education. Of course, Mr. Shigeo Katsu, Katsu San, the president of Nazarbayev University, a distinguished uh, prominent education uh, think tank. So just a beginner, a short uh, historic uh, retrospective. Uh, when in the first time we had a radio, the radio was invented, then several experts started telling that education will drastically change. And in fact, in the beginning of uh, the radio distribution, there were some, there were very po popular educational programs. If you may commemorate some old movies, uh, they just sit around radio. When someone would just tell them uh, some stories. And there was a quiet, quite vivid sense that the education would change. And, due to this uh, mass tool, uh, namely radio. But then uh, we had television, and everyone started uh, telling that, that surely that's the point when the education would uh, be no, will, will drastically change again, it will enable access to the information. And at the start of the onset of this uh, television there were very numerous number of uh, educational uh, programs, and we had internet, and our so and everyone started telling the traditional model of education, of in-class education, uh, where is where is a teacher and a class, it will definitely be changed and will convert in something, in something very new source of mass information distribution system. Unfortunately, such drastic, such a conceptual different format of information transmission, we did not witness. Although uh, we witnessed, uh, well, the 100 years period. Now, today we have an, an absolute virtual reality. And and one uh, told that everything would change, but unfortunately, the huge revolution did not take place. So, 2020 commemorated uh, by a very interesting thing, thanks to pandemic, or due to pandemic, I would say, uh, 193 uh, countries had to convert their uh, school education into online system. It was unprepared. It was drastic um, leap. Uh, huge problems has uh, have been revealed, especially uh, problems in the sphere of digital literacy bo of both teachers and pupils. The problem of content. Them some methodological problems has. Uh, a problem have revealed. It turned out that it's way difficult to teach in the online format. Some because uh, different requirements uh, uh, has revealed. So, first question to speakers: Is digital uh, environment? I mean, digital tools that pretend to offer some radical 
uh, improvements in teaching and in education uh, could uh, change radically traditional uh, education system or educational uh, model, namely uh, teacher uh, versus uh, class or pupils. Or uh, so far, such a traditional model uh, will still live, will still be valid and intact, and there will be only additional tools that would help uh, teachers to uh, personalize education, to collect data, to give some uh, advantages in terms of knowledge assessment and monitoring. But principally and basically, the education model uh, will remain intact and the same or maybe for centuries or uh, very unlikely it will change in uh, decades. Let's start from this very question and just to make sure we have a cooperative discussion and let's put a limit of uh, three from three to four minutes for every speaker just to make sure everyone would have an opportunity to share their thoughts and then we'll see how our discussion uh, goes so here i think very 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 uh, distinguished speakers and who would like to be the first who would like to volunteer please uh, uh, let's open the discussion. Who would, who wants to be the first? I mean, we have representatives from the high school. <laughs> or it could be someone. Uh, Miras, uh, you as a representative of uh, the Ministry of Education and Science, I think uh, the minister is really troubled with that uh, topic. Yes, yes, absolutely true. Thank you so much for giving me a floor. First of all, I would like taking the opportunity, I would like to greet everyone at this platform and thank the organizers for making this possible. I would like to uh, greet all the colleagues, Mr. Katsu, Mr. Tsui, and Ms. Kozamzharova, and you, Sayasat. And today's discussion, I hope that today's discussion will be very fruitful. It was rightfully mentioned by Sayasat that we had many myths around the topic when we had internet, radio, TV, television, that this, this is it, that's the, um, that's the end. And everything uh, would be very new. As it will just be turned by 360 degrees. But today I would like just to spend three minutes maximum to uh, eliminate, alleviate those myths, what we do to uh, to make sure such sort of myths mm, do not appear, at least in Kazakhstan. So we always tell that in the time of pandemic, we have a, a distance education. That's hard truth. Nobody could uh, basically challenge that truth. We shall not speak that the uh, online education appeared only in the era in the era of pandemic no coursera uh, were, pre were was present before and there were quite a number of people involved into that classical universities were hesitant uh, were hesitating to provide such an opportunity i would like just to make sure everyone understand at least from our uh, standpoint as a ministry we do not think that the uh, online or offline education they're equal no of course not they're not equal that's the first point i want to make now second point i want to make uh, there is a myth that the education is only transfer of information no it's in fact that's not the case because if, if education is just a, if, if, if that's the case then we would just receive from education you can just open youtube just uh, watching some national geographic channels and you could just pretend that you know everything about geography. But in fact, the education is about reflexes, the abilities, capabilities of uh, pupils to reflect on the information they receive from uh, outer, uh, outer environment, just to elaborate this re reflection and then challenge and doubt uh, some facts. That's system, that's a holistic system could be possible whenever you have a feedback only. Of course, during online plot in, in the year of online platforms, they provide opportunities, tools, such tools like to teachers to express feedback. But unfortunately, as a matter of fact, nothing could change a direct contact with the 
uh, teacher. So in that particular case, uh, you just develop and improve the special chemistry, the chemistry of sharing knowledge uh, between the teacher and pupil, and pupil provide their feedback, they reflect. So uh, like any other students uh, across the globe, we face a situation when uh, we had to switch to online education. Of course, we had to adapt our resources. Uh, we were telling that uh, several TV lessons and we were preparing some platforms. And at this point, very important now and before is to establish a digital environment system or ecosystem. Talking about colleges, universities, that's the most important thing. This ecosystem shall be present and a pupil or student or teacher shall feel not like 100% comfort, but at least, but at least they shouldn't feel timid or uh, humiliated uh, or Ill, lacking some knowledge. So in, in this particular case was to teach teachers uh, and uh, of universities, colleges and schools for uh, these, for obtaining these knowledge in terms of digital technologies. We would like like to, we really wanted to uh, them to learn these ethics, digital um, tutoring ethics. Um, many students pass through these uh, uh, retraining sessions. So basically, 40 minutes in Zoom uh, and teaching an effective. Uh, effective teaching was quite a hard task for them. If you sit at home, uh, how would you manage uh, your stress uh, and tell, uh, when your kids are all around and telling you, please help me, help me, mom, I'm so challenged with this or that task or equation. So on top of that, I would like to tell that here in this particular case, we have to talk about the variety because every single problem we face or the society, be it pandemic or any other sort of problem, digital inequality, everything requires a serious inclusion. Uh, I think the inclusion is not only providing uh, to handicapped people capabilities of education, it's uh, giving capabilities uh, to cope with different difficulties. So the diff global uh, difficulty is how students or pupils would receive efficient way of receiving and assess and getting knowledge. That's uh, all about effective knowledge. Because I personally think that today uh, uh, online education is inclusive. What what percent of in inclusion education you have? I'm telling them 100 percent. We face difficulties. Uh, is what is Skill important. It's a diversity or diversity of tools. If we uh, uh, focus on one tool, of course, they wouldn't be efficient. There wouldn't be no effect. Uh, we do not uh, focus on internet only as long as we have some regions with no access or uh, then we had some TV lessons, then we had problems. Uh, what uh, What's the feedback on TV lessons? So we also invented uh, email feedback. So, and how would you, uh, Arrange that. How would you do? This? Is it efficient? Why don't we remember Great Britain after Great War, after Second World War? So, and British Post basically helped uh, people and teachers to share information between each other. Even the radio, all those tools that were mentioned before, radio, TV, and internet, we were using because the variety of resources enable enable to develop this ecosystem. It's not just a digital ecosystem, it's an inclusive ecosystem, because that is why, summing up, I would like to uh, tell the following. Now we deal with the necessity to address challenges that everyone has. They arise not only there is, due to the fact that there is a pandemic, because there is a demand for a more uh, better education. And now we have to answer and match this demand via uh, inclusive education tools. And here, in this case, in, in a variety shall 
play a great role in competency of teachers and inclusiveness of all the pupils. That's the third element uh, it, that will uh, be available whenever we have interest. If you look at the lessons at Coursera of well-known uh, Nobel uh, Prize winners that uh, uh, do some uh, physics uh, in their classes for five for 45 minutes, you would just you would just uh, you would just go to the physics department or be, it became another uh, yet another physics professor. So I wish all our pedagogues and teachers to become such people. Thank you so much for your attention. So basically, so, well, just summing up, yes, technology could help us uh, to uh, foster uh, in case of Kazakhstan, to, so we're applying such sort of a hybrid approach when we had an ecosystem, the cooperation of both digital, non-digital channels of uh, information sharing, and that basically enabled huge more coverage with information. So, so the bottleneck was a digital literacy of teachers themselves, and we have to retrain them very quickly and raise their awareness. And just summing up, uh, as far as I understood, uh, traditional um, model so far uh, will not turn into a very, very unique instrument. So it's like a, uh, it's like a helper. It's like an assistant. And while combining these approaches, we could uh, reach our educational targets, especially in terms of uh, uh, switching to in terms of switching to uh, preparation. Uh, does anyone does anyone want to continue so talking about the great promise of digital world to radically change the education world if it's real or not mr Tsu, you would like to elaborate on that a bit yes i tried to find my button for raise hands but i couldn't find it uh, yes, I'd like to continue, although uh, at the beginning I had trouble uh, with the translation. I, I forgot to press the button. Anyway, um, I, I just want to uh, come back to uh, the difference between information and knowledge. Uh, you have such vast amount of information on the internet, uh, but uh, if the information is now well organized by the teacher, and then uh, it will not be well organized by the students. The student has to organize the information to become their own knowledge because teaching and learning are two things. The teacher teach, he thought he taught a lot of things by, uh, on, and then uh, from the internet or from the digital uh, sort of resources, you do have a lot of information taught by different people. And then how the students absorb this information to become their own knowledge, to synthesize the information and become their knowledge. I think it's something that's very important for the teacher to design a way to assess the students, whether they actually learn, okay? So that is a big difference, okay? Uh, teacher used to have a set of uh, syllabus, a set of uh, uh, teaching materials he or she controls, okay? So he knows that he would go through this, and students will learn at least this much. We talk about learning objectives. Now, of course, with the, all the information out there, sometimes the information is not so well packaged to the likings or as designed by the teacher because you cannot control the source. Okay, of course you can tailor made and so on, but you'll be missing things or you may have extra things. So the students may be confused. Okay, that's number one to say information and knowledge are, are two different things. And then they talk about the, uh, the training of teachers. Nowadays, uh, some teachers try to uh, uh, do online teaching, but they just do the usual way. Uh, they use slides, PowerPoints, and then just teach the way they used to teach. Now, of course, Nobel laureates, they give one lecture. They talk about their own experience uh, they speak with a passion, is very uh, moving, very uh, touching and, and passionate. So the students will absorb a lot by watching 
the Nobel laureate talks. Okay, but then the teacher they don't know how to speak in front of a camera. Okay, they just go through the same thing. Maybe just reading the notes, or looking at the blackboard or the the slides. So no communication. Now, now coming back to Nobel laureates, I think it's very important to get students uh, excited about a subject. Okay, but teachers still have to assemble the knowledge. I, I'm repeating myself now over there. And then, uh, and then the, uh, the last point I want to make here is that at university education is not just about classroom teaching or classroom experience. It's about outside of classroom learning, okay? Uh, about student interaction amongst themselves teacher and students uh, communication, okay? And then they, uh, we talk about student exchanges. Now, this is a whole big topic. You want students to experience a new environment to gain knowledge how to deal with people with different uh, cultural backgrounds, with different beliefs, and different uh, kind of a, uh, thinking. Uh, because we got educated in different environment, we have a different upbringing, our thinking is actually quite different, okay? And some people would think graphically and some people would just take in words, okay? So uh, when you do the assessment, you really have to uh, assemble all this uh, to become a, a, a way to see how much students uh, uh, have learned. Okay, so I maybe I'll stop here and let other people continue. Thank you very much, Professor Tsui. Very important thoughts that the information and knowledge, these are two different substances, two different concepts. And the delivery of information that can be done through the media can be done on a much larger scale. And it's not necessarily will be converted to knowledge. So we need to facilitate, we need to support this process to rethink this information. So that's very important function of the teacher. And also what is important that the higher education is not just the place for collecting and transferring knowledge. This is also the place for socialization, for finding yourself in social context, to work with other people, to make friends at the campus, to make bonds for life, and to have very good life experience, social experience. I think that's very important. Could you please comment the first question? Can uh, this digital environment fully uh, so replace the traditional pedagogics? We don't hear you. Could you please come closer to the microphone? No, no, we don't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Distinguished laureates, can you hear me? Unfortunately, I cannot hear you. Shikio uh, Katsu, can you maybe continue now? Sure. Um, I, I don't want to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Daria, can you can can you speak? Daria, we cannot hear you so far. Can you hear me? We still have some technical issues. Sayahat, can you hear me? One, two, three. Yes, the organizers can hear. Yes, yes, we can hear the Ria. Okay, then I will continue talking. Distinguished Nobel 
Вечер. Praise Рада winners, laureates, distinguished colleagues. I'm very happy to welcome you at the last day of the festival. So I said thank you very much for this opportunity to talk. I'm very happy to meet the representatives such as the President of Nazarbayev University, Shakir Okatsu, and Professor Tsui. We know what a great contribution you made to the project of competitiveness of universities of uh, Russia. And uh, what is interesting for us is the Hong Kong University case. That's your alma mater. Shakir Okatsu, thanks to you, the country received the unique innovational model of a university competitive at the world level, Nazarbayev University. Nazarbayev University is one of the brands of Kazakhstan. Our university is ready to cooperate with your organizations for the implementation of new projects. And let me now get to the presentation. For I just used the wrong uh, channel and I couldn't hear you, that's why I'm sorry about that. According to statistics, the IT world market is a four million dollars and Kazakhstan is uh, two billion dollars. What we discuss here is the major factor for implementing the plan of introducing new disciplines according to the new professions atlas of developing new curriculum electronic curriculum and digitalized teaching processes in the university as you know 27 kazakhstan universities are now using the new ownership they are non-commercial joint stock companies they have academic and financial freedom and uh, answering your questions Ayazad, and presenting which tasks we are doing now, the universities. These are the very important issues which people will be needed at the market in 10, 15 years. How we should teach our students what curriculum program will be interesting and efficient for the students to teach them online which skills and competences should our teachers have what new structures are needed to develop digital projects in the economy and also the government according to the digital kazakhstan program is accelerating economy development and transfer to digital economy of the future if, as you know in 2018 the university is implementing Digital Kazakhstan program. It is focused on developing digital ecosystem in the university, improving digital literacy, improving quality of teaching. And despite of the fact that we have achieved some success, we still have some issues that we have especially seen during pandemic. This is the low digital literacy among teachers, especially of the senior age. This is also a lack of IT specialists in the region, and it is, this deficit is increasing. We are also increasing number of internet users, especially mobile internet users that creates a big market for new services. The digital infrastructure is improving and funding of IT sector is increasing. We are now moving in the development of IT infrastructure development and internet technologies development. And uh, there is also new trends in the world, such as blockchain, big data, artificial intelligence, 3D technologies, internet solutions, robotics, cloud computing, this is all putting uh, responsibility on universities, how to teach students and how to select teachers for teaching new professions. And during the pandemic, we've seen that universities should work more to face the new realities and challenges. And this is the issue that we are all discussing today, Sayasat. 
it is important for us to speed up digitalization so that we could enter the new level of quality education with any scenarios of COVID pandemic. And we also think that university, despite of the, its strategy, should have digital transformation, not considering only digital, but also educational global trends. Educational system should become a bridge for transferring to the digital age that will lead to emergence of new professions. We should improve education, science, and labor productivity. We thank your company for the innovation projects in education. Your atlas is especially needed now. It is the orientation for us for choosing professions of the 21st century occupations. So this is what is really needed. Within your project, we are setting the objectives of uh, forecasting the labor market needs. And according to the foresight of the session about the new occupations in Kazakhstan, we have updated curriculum considering the digital competences that will enable our students to resolve issues related to digital solutions. And we are also redesigning the curriculum and uh, we are cooperating with employers. We are introducing the program minor copywriter, SMM manager, IT engineer technologist. And due to such innovations, we have 30 dual education programs together with our stakeholders, the largest companies in the region. We also improve the results of teaching and uh, we provide the services of uh, virtual admission, virtual library, virtual library, virtual laboratory. We do the analytical research on using artificial intelligence and robotics. Information the educational environment in the university is based on technical and educational resources. It is regulated through social media, different platforms, online education, and currently the university's efforts should be focused not just resolving the current issues, but also the reconstruction of the internal and external management system. Our Wizard of University sets one of its priorities, the digitalization process and the establishing digital university. Such transference to digital university will enable us to introduce flexible business processes, change of the corporate culture, individual education, and improve the content of curriculum. We understand that the e-learning provides the better impact of improving the skills of uh, students and teachers if they are working with the digital library. The use of uh, international platforms and their digital content enables us to transform our education focused at developing IT skills of our graduates. And the university is starting to work with the Center of uh, Contemporary Education, YEDU SOF, with integration of the online courses. To receive the multiplier effect and using this online content, we set the consortium with the Kazakhstan universities in technical specializations. And uh, in the digitalization of science, our researchers develop innovational 
projects, develop the innovation ecosystem of the university. The university is working according to the principle of the Silicon Valley, provides the free access to employers, entrepreneurs, and investors. And the, within the field of developing digital technologies, our researchers are working on uh, automation and developing automated management system for the optimal use of solar power. And we are going to introduce driveless devices and uh, in machinery building, we do a project on developing technology and modeling the process of biogas treatment to receive highly concentrated methane. In agriculture, our researchers were developing ecosystem of Shimken city. This would include vegetables, fruits, dairy products. This is the smart agriculture concept. Uh, and we used Germany ecosystems as an example, or Skolkova in Russia. Distinguished colleagues, I give you the sh short information about the major uh, information about our concept for digital transformation. Of course, it was very useful for us to exchange the experience, to exchange students and teachers with the Kazakhstan University, such as Nazarbayev University and foreign universities that would enable us to adapt for the changing world and uh, decrease risks. We are always ready to cooperate with universities. Thank you for your attention. I'll be happy to answer your questions, if any. It was so in-depth and detailed uh, remarks. That I'm really happy that the regional universities, they very had a very concrete understanding, very solid understanding what tasks uh, shall be formulated in, in, towards uh, the educational system. Separate thanks that you mentioned our project, uh, I mean, Atlas of New Professions of Kazakhstan, we're about to complete it and uh, commence and embark on the final stage. Uh, we're really sorry for such a long discussion. Uh, let's try. Uh, let's try to answer this question. Your, please provide your opinion, uh, who is as an expert. So, can such tools drastically change the education system itself? Uh, what do you think on that? Um, Thank you. Uh, first of all, congratulations uh, to, to the two presenters. Uh, I think you did a great uh, job in introducing the topic uh, of whether digitalization can replace uh, formal modes of education or not. And of course, uh, the concrete example of uh, a ways of uh, university uh, Rector has, uh, has, has just presented. Um, and, and I certainly uh, congratulate the ambition and the scope of the thinking behind it. I wish all the one um, I think, in a way, the, if, you, if sort of one boils down what really COVID 19 has brought upon our education system, the way it is obviously clearly that digitalization is not an option, it has become a master. So it's, it's obviously the most immediate uh, reaction uh, impact. Uh, the second is that campuses are empty. Um, you know, and that leads to what uh, Professor Tsi said, you know, um, empty campuses mean that one of the key social functions of universities of building lifelong, you know, friendships, learning, uh, experiential learning, being exposed to people with different thinking—all those things are stunted at this point. And I think 
that is something that even the digital uh, space has difficulty replicating, or we haven't as yet been able to really emulate it as well as custom uh, in, uh, changes. Um, and of course, the third uh, impact is, and we've seen it with uh, Coursera and everybody, EDX, and so they started to offer for university also free uh, courses and so on. Um, the competition from the traditional, uh, non-traditional, non-traditional service providers such as these digital platforms is obviously uh, heating up. Um, and so I think uh, universities really have to focus on what is a particular value added that universities can provide, uh, in particular in this digital uh, age. And, and um, in the end, if you, if you look at uh, the vocation of universities, and Professor Tsui really nailed it when he said that uh, part of, it's not just transmitting or building knowledge, it is to educate citizens, a holistic approach. And um, you, want, you want to build through our education system, or educate future, uh, professionals that are able to live and work with machines increasingly, but are not going to just listen or do what machines tell human beings. <laughs> it's, it's this ability to coexist and to exercise judgment, which is like, going to be a key element. Now the question is, how do we educate uh, the future generations? And if you also look at the at, at, uh, World Economic Forums, and so when they say, what are the most required skills? In a way, digital literacy is taken for granted, but they still would think of you know, complex problem solving, um, critical thinking, creativity, uh, people management, emotional intelligence. Uh, negotiation skills, you know, all these so what you would call soft skills continue to be actually dominant in what employers think are needed. So universities really have to think hard about how are we going to provide these soft skills in a digital format if that's the only way to go to do it. Now, I think that hopefully we will be able to manage COVID, surely there will be future other pandemics coming. So this is only the very first one that has arrived. It has put us all on notice. Um, and, and some form of mixed uh, hybrid instruction is going to certainly be there. I think we, we, sh we should not lose all that we've learned over digital learning and teaching but we have to combine it with personal uh, teaching that is needed for personal face-to-face -face interaction that develops all the soft skills. Plus, obviously, the STEM disciplines have suffered most in this uh, digital or enforced digital uh, learning. Um, what I think will happen partly is that there is going to be a further bifurcation between research universities um, no, sure. that, that, will, that will focus and create more international research consortia, research networks as universities. That bifurcation on one side and the other are universities that have more the vocation of teaching professional skills. Less research, more for the market. I would put and there, I think new forms of degrees will certainly spring up. Uh, stacked degrees, where you have more uh, certificates that are going to be stacked and uh, put together to form a new form of degrees. I think those things will start to happen. And where indeed, uh, the combination of digital classrooms, but also internships, digital uh, experiential learning and others will sort of 
pulled, be pulled together to form degrees. Um, those will probably see a very strong uh, emergence, I think. Um, and here in Kazakhstan, or for many of the countries indeed, uh, which are trying to make the push from the resource base into knowledge intensive economy. You know, Kazakhstan needs both a small number of research universities and a large number of universities that are really educating uh, the future workers, the future professionals. And I think it's it's how we're going to organize this. This balance is going to be one of the key challenges. And I think we all can contribute. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katsusan. You just, uh, uh, we're on the same way, basically. I would like to s s just, just to ask two questions. So before doing that, let me just to cite and quote several quote, several statements related to digital platforms and uh, education. Uh, first cited belongs to Stephen Joy, Washington professor, University professor uh, by 2010, intellectual artificial in, in AI will substitute teacher and the uh, scientific degree will uh, lose its importance. Uh, involvement into interest clubs will be more important and will be of more significance. Now, the second citation that's devoted to um, ministry, uh, the secretary of uh, ministry of education of Singapore, what does he say? Uh, educational organizations, uh, they will just uh, be eliminated. There will be personalized education in place. The phenomenon of this uh, life continuous education will be a key principle of higher education. And the very last citation, the last quote uh, from a prominent expert from Jeremy Salami, he's also an expert uh, in the World Bank, expert, having development, having development uh, of high school, there will be no need in diploma. The, the student would have a chance to receive uh, knowledge at any point of time, at any location. And now I have two questions to our experts. Hope uh, the translation made sense. With regards to these uh, quotes, my first question, after we, after lockdown, after lockdown is completed, be it Hong Kong, Shukant, or Singapore, you as heads of, like uh, Mr. Tsui, as a professor of association and head of association, what do you think? First thing, first thing, you will change or you will change or you will alter uh, or will just eliminate uh, due to those lessons that you've got, uh, you've learned uh, during the pandemic, what would you alter first? We obviously have to leverage the situation and take benefit. And the second question to you all, how do you see the universities, be it Hong Kong, Shimken, uh, or be it Nazarbayev University in 10 years? Uh, what model will it be there? Would you please briefly describe the model, the educational model of uh, at your university? Be it, uh, it could be an online platform or some hybrid platform, uh, some with hybrid means. And the very last, uh, do you agree with these, with these uh, quotations? Or with all these opinions of very prominent and well-known expert educational experts. Uh, let's start with you. Is there any future uh, in this model we just see now? I mean, the uh, online education and what, for, what, what first changes, uh, what top changes would you introduce? Just an expert in the field of education, would you please uh, share uh, with us your immediate lessons, uh, what pandemic revealed and what we do this right thank you so much say said for your question indeed it's a they are good these are good quotes i would like uh, to listen to three speakers because there were questions to them but from my perspective uh, what would i do first is it's already been done basically it's already been studied we've already started doing in terms of it in terms of preparing it specialists of course we have to 
remove all the barriers so for the teachers who are basically providing these lessons and we have already mentioned that we're doing we're doing great job in the in this regard we have to have a certain number of professors that with degrees who would be capable to provide lessons in IT. Now we see that good teachers, IT teachers, these are not only teachers with degrees, that these are people who know how to code. And it's very interesting moment is uh, the younger they are, the better they communicate with, with their uh, people of the same age and they transfer knowledge. It's really interesting. And the, uh, uh, well, it doesn't necessarily uh, depend on the, the teacher's degree rather than on his age. Uh, now, the second thing which is very important, we have uh, special diplomas. We have some state uh, state diplomas will be passed, and then uh, the diplomas of uh, these or that universities will uh, be in, uh, in place, will be uh, introduced. So I'd like to, it's really important to have a certification because as a matter of fact, universities, they basically provide a contextual amount of uh, knowledge, but qualification is provided by the market and is given by market. Now, when we say that if we, what what diploma basically confirms, the diploma confirms that within certain amount of time you are studying at the university, and that's why you are meeting some uh, university standards and probably. Uh, or you may also meet some demands of the market, but the question is if market could provide you with qualification. So in this particular regard, especially with regards to regulated uh, professions, legal, uh, IT, uh, medical sphere, it's of course, of course, accountants. Yeah, it's like accountants. So those uh, c c certified accountants. That's one thing. The other thing, accountants with diplomas. So it's quite obvious that we have to change our approaches and next. Next year, those approaches will be changed. We have promoted the anti-crisis plan. It's sort of a, uh, it's like a development plan in a short-term period, uh, and which consists comprises three steps, and all these steps aimed at maximum uh, uh, academic uh, independence. So we're working heavily on these issues. SciSat is a, also part of that uh, project. It's development of strategies of higher education up to 2025 as part of this project we laid uh, uh, the development of our ecosystem of at various uh, universities it's not a digital ecosystem that's a ecosystem of of environmental relationship or, or environmental education when we teach people to be environmental friendly. Now, the secondly, we have also put the basis of the strategy that different approaches to different uh, demands of the labor market. You wouldn't have uh, absolutely different, absolutely similar demands from US, we have differentiate those approaches. And the very important thing I would like to pay attention to is that it's quite obvious that in a post-pandemic world uh, and post-pandemic era, uh, such period will be heavily dependent uh, when universities would think on how partially leave what they uh, work, this uh, very essential knowledge and uh, the two difficulties of our mistakes, how those, how these mistakes would be learned and the whole world had already learned from this pandemic, how would it be possible to live and uh, embed into this system? I think we need a great, a huge job to be done and some some lessons could be uh, turned into an online form definitely uh, this uh, summer we had uh, virtual um, application offices they were accepting uh, documents via uh, virtual application offices uh, this experience could be widespread why don't you paid visits in person, uh, flying all over uh, from uh, various oblasts in Kyrgyzstan. So I think I'm, I heavily agree with uh, Professor Tsui, who mentioned that, that a, a university and education is not about teaching or face-to-face -face teaching. It's also about learning uh, by the student itself and our library resources. Of course, we have to develop our digital resources at libraries, because without it, uh, the 
the student will, will not come to library. And if he wants to, we have to make it as interesting, as much interesting as possible, uh, where they would not just uh, read books only. Uh, they will just communicate, also communicate, talk to their uh, people of the same age. So classical approaches, uh, they become less and less important. So we have to adapt. And in this particular regard, we will definitely witness and monitor trends and focus on your atlas of new professions, uh, SIASAT as well. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Said. Thank you, sir, so much. Yes, Mr. Tsui. Uh, yes. Two simple and big questions, though. Uh, what could be changed right after the pandemic and in 10 years period? What uh, model of education system would we have? No, uh, what happened, uh, we cannot really uh, go back and change that students uh, graduate uh, without uh, a certain uh, sort of exposure to classmates. And then they still graduate. They have a piece of a diploma or certificate. Uh, they, they, you cannot take, uh, sort of go back uh, for this group of students. But I always say that the people are very adaptive. People can catch up. If they are bright, they can always catch up. So I will bring up uh, the the concept or the, uh, the, the, the what's already available is continued education. So if they if they have the basics, okay, they can always go catch up. Okay, of course, uh, human interaction they lost. Okay, but uh, uh, I think minister and others have talked about uh, that the, the students are very smart these days. They can uh, compensate by the computer skills, by the IT skills, okay? So let's, uh, let's go with that. Um, the, the second point is that the, uh, um, the students I mentioned about the basic training, okay? If the students, college students, they do not have proper training in high school, they will have trouble in studying universities, okay? Especially when the people look at too much at the outcome, you want to really go uh, science, uh, you want to go finance, and they may select subjects, okay? And then they're missing some uh, part of their education. They're missing a lot of knowledge uh, which they should have learned, okay? So how do you compensate that? I think uh, uh, one way to do that is by continued education. So a very brief answer to your very difficult questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, just could you give us just a quick answer? Well, I think it's not important where the university is in the region, in the capital, or abroad. The most important is what is the teaching like? and what are the students. Students and teachers should be partners. And what shall be changed quickly? I think currently what has already changed, IT thinking changed of our students. Because before we talked about the classical teaching or hybrid teaching, remote teaching. So we used it even before the pandemic but now we need it infrastructure this is absolutely needed absolutely critical what we need is the it culture at universities what also i see this issue question that you asked i have already answered today because we see that universities they should have developed digital uh, digital ecosystem. And I think in 10 years, teachers will be replaced by artificial intelligence. The market will need new digital occupations. And right now, we don't know what kind of occupations will be needed because the world is changing fast. The science has no borders. That's why in the 21st century, 
we need to face the modern challenges. We live in the post-industrial age. Thank you very much. Katsusan. Thank you. Uh, I certainly agree with uh, both Professor and uh, Rector uh, uh, And, you know, you asked us to what are really changes that we start to see. I mean, I agree. We are already, you know, universities typically are often referred to as very traditional conservative organizations that from time to time may have radical ideas. <laughs> COVID is one of those times where we are forced to have radical ideas. And, and so what we started will continue. Definitely. So um, the, the forced online uh, has had many implications. We have started to become much more partners with the uh, wireless providers, for instance, the cell phone, other providers. You know, we have been our IT department has been working hand in hand with all the, the cell phone providers, for instance, the wireless providers in the country, so that we understand what the coverage is and the quality of coverage is throughout the country because of our students, wherever they are. And have also secured different bandwidths and we're tailoring whatever is pushed out in terms of teaching material and so to the bandwidth and speed of the various regions. So, but even that obviously is not enough and so we need to also bring in additional IT equipment and so at the students' levels and so what we cannot change is unfortunately at this point the study environment at home and, and the fact is that students are in their family environment with parents many siblings and so in a very congested place everybody trying to get time slots on on very scarce computer times you know and so or, or, or noise levels around and so on. And uh, in critical times, uh, the, the system breaks down and all these things happen. So I think there will be continued investment in all these areas that we obviously will continue. Um, and uh, now forward to uh, what, will, what we will see, what we will be, we will be like in 10 years' time. And, one of the things is that universities are not isolated uh, parts of the education system. We rely very much on the secondary school system and the type of education that is provided in, obviously, the, the secondary school, uh, school system. And uh, this is where OECD's uh, you know, Education uh, 2030 program is, is so important and the concept of digital citizenship that, that they are bringing through. So if the students who join universities are already very advanced in digital citizenship issues, then I think the shift of education and learning that will take place at the university level is going to be relatively small. If it is not done in the secondary school level, then the, the gap is going to be considerable, and I think the challenges are going to be that much higher. So we have to be mindful of, uh, of the types of, of uh, students that how well they are going to be prepared. Uh, in our specific case, what I could see is that certainly we will have a lot of hybrid classes. Um, we're going to have a globally networked form of, of teaching uh, I think, meaning students will take, while they are at Nazarbayev University, uh, be enrolled or take courses from two, three, four other universities around the world. With, uh, and, and they even may participate in research that is led by faculty of other universities. They participate. Um, they, the type of, of credits that are going to be provided is going to change quite a lot. It's not anymore just classroom credits. A lot of it is going to be experiential learning related and credits of, uh, and not just the traditional internships and so, but rather 
startups, you know, those startups, and those are going to be part of the credit systems. Um, you know, uh, a lot of emphasis, I think, I would personally like to give on social entrepreneurship. And so as as we further will probably, given the you know advance that the, the uh, Rector Kojamjaro was absolutely right when she says in ten years maybe some you know faculty may be replaced by uh, through AI and robots and so on. I mean, the three ingredients that allowed AI to merge machine learning merge that's computing power, more data being available, better algorithms. Those are going to continue over the next years. We're going to see a massive explosion. And that means that indeed a lot of the, uh, the traditional teaching and learning can probably be taken over, or it's going to be a joint human and machine delivery of things. Um, but what the machines cannot provide, and where humans stay unique, the humans are in many ways emotional parts over the next 10 years. Maybe the future that will also change. If you ask me over the next 10 years, I think the, the, the socialization aspects are so, uh, still uniquely human. That is going to be part of what universities such as ours are going to continue to provide. That's some of this, the general overview of it, where, where we will be in 10 years now. Большое спасибо всем спикерам. У нас осталось буквально 3-4 минуты. Dear speakers, thank you very much. We have just three minutes left. I have just a short question. Just imagine a situation. You have a lamp. You have touched it and you have a genie coming out of it. And he can make your dream come true. Just one wish. If you had such a chance and uh, any of your wish could be fulfilled. Which problem in the higher education would you resolve? Just one problem. So the genie can do anything for you, any, any issue with the higher education. If, you, if I had such a lamp, I would ask the pandemic to finish quickly and the students come back to school. This is my biggest wish. And you are supported by almost all parents of Kazakhstan. Mr. Tsui, what would you wish? Uh, what would be your wish? I wish the AI can help uh, uh, us uh, find out uh, what uh, uh, each student actually needs. Mm -hmm. And then we can provide the information accordingly. Okay. Any one just problem that you would like to resolve? Well, that's a very interesting question. And of course, I agree no, the pandemic хочется... should finish quickly. That would be very good. But also, I would like to say something more. I want the peace all over the world. Peace for all of us. And so that it is warm, that's the global issue of today. Maybe I am, of course, away from the topic of the higher education, but education has no boundaries, and we understand that. But when the artificial intelligence, digitalization, everything is in place, and we are discussing what will be next occupations. But we know that the world, the planet Earth, and actually there are other universities and there are other worlds we know, but I would like to have the interaction between all these components between the world. Then everything will be good, quiet, and I'm a mother, that's why I am expressing such thoughts. But sometimes we are very concerned, very fearful. And the scientific discoveries should serve the peace 
in the world. And Jean would say, what did you ask about pandemic? Shikyo uh, Katsu, which would be your problem to resolve? Um, okay. Um, Kazakhstan wants to be, and I, I think it really is a laudable objective, part of the top 30 most uh, developed countries in the world, and not just on per capita income, but quality of life. In a way, no citizen has been high. And for that, obviously, education is a key driver. But uh, Kazakhstan also needs to tap as much as possible international talent and brains. So my wish, if, if I had this gene in front of me, would be really to make sure that not just a few or elite universities exist here, at this point, but the overall education level, so preschool, elementary school, secondary school, university, special education, the overall level goes up. And this reaches world standards, global standard or world class standard, whatever you want to call it, and attracts really brains from all over the world so that together you know, we can build this modern future. That would be my wish. Yeah. Oh, no. I mean, like what we say in Kazakh, and Kazakh would say, inshallah, in Russian, I mean, this when the participants, we are out of time. Thank you so much for expressing your positions. And uh, as uh, Gospasha Daria said, let's hope that we will have peace all over the world and all our resources and efforts that we focus on education. We hope this will be all well used for the formation of uh, responsible citizens that will be thoughtful in dealing with any issues, issues of the world, issues of life, and issues of uh, building harmonical society. And uh, the development should not stop. And uh, the digital environment should give us the better access to the bigger number of st students, children, to high quality education. And education is the great equalizer that will provide access to people for the better life, and that will be the best achievement for the countries. Thank you once again. And we finalize this session for the day. All the best of luck, good health, and let the pandemic finish quickly and our children come back to full-scale uh, learning process.